Today, as we continue to understand how to take, how to redeem the time and how to take control of time for divine purposes, I'm going to be sharing something about how we ought to live and how we ought to pray in the sixth week of the year. The key to understanding the sixth week of the year is what God did on the sixth day of creation and what is recorded in the sixth book of the Bible and in the sixth chapters of the Bible. These are patterns. They help us to see pattern. A pattern is a guide. A pattern is what you look at to see what something ought to be like. You know, you have a pattern for a building, a pattern for shoes, a pattern for clothes, a pattern for different things. So a pattern, you know, so we have patterns in God's word that help us to understand times and seasons. So what is the mystery of the sixth season or the sixth week? And what I share concerning the sixth week is applicable to the sixth day, is applicable to the sixth month, is applicable to the sixth year, the sixth seven years, or even the sixth 49 years, or even the sixth century. They are all sixth seasons, you know, um, but, you know, differing in, in their size, in size or in the uh, volume of time that is in each season. Now, so what is, what is the significance of the sixth season? Let's begin uh, by looking at the creation pattern, the pattern in, in, the crea in creation. On the sixth day, God made land animals first, first. And God said, let us make the living creature you know, I mean, God, God made, he said, let the ground bring forth the living creature in Genesis chapter 1, verse 24. And, um, you know, the animals came forth, the beast, I mean, the, 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 the cattle, the beasts, and the creeping things, they came forth from the dry ground. And then after that, the Lord said, let us make man in our image. Now that's striking. That helps us to understand that the creatures that came before human beings were not in the image of God. And that helps us to understand what the season is about. That the, and, and when God created man, he said, let them have dominion over the creatures that came before them. Let the creatures that have the image of God have dominion over the creatures that uh, do not bear the image of God. So in every sixth season, we have conflict between people who supposedly bear the image of God, people who represent uh, godliness, people who express godliness, and those who express ungodliness. It's not that, it's a, that there is a fight between humans and animals and we're trying to dominate animals. No, it is that in six seasons, the beastly nature rises in man and men, you know, multiply wickedness, men multiply foolishness, men multiply craftiness. And so in that time, a line is drawn between humans who express wickedness and those who express godliness those who are after godliness so you know we're going to be looking into into this so what god did on the sixth day of creation and what is recorded in the sixth book of the bible and the six chapters of the bible help us to understand what god what the creator has in mind concerning the sixth season, whether it's sixth week or sixth day or sixth month or sixth year, six, seven years or six, 49 years or even sixth century. And so that helps us to know how to pray because Zechariah 10 verse 1 says, ask the Lord for rain in the time of the rain. That means we need to know the time of purposes so we can, you know, align our prayers in that direction and ask God for things because their time has come. That's what we ought to do. So the first thing um, we, we, we see is that the sixth season is a time of 
war against rebellion and ungodliness. Things, you know, it's like God when God says to man, subdue and have dominion. Subdue, rule, and have dominion. Those are not very friendly words. <laughs> Subdue, rule, have dominion. It means there is war. It means there is conflict. So the sixth season is a season of conflict. It's a season of war against rebellion. So what God, you know, uh, hinted on the sixth day of creation, we see in the sixth chapter of Genesis. God says, the rebellion of man, the wickedness of man, the ungodliness of man has multiplied in the earth, and I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to wipe off humanity that I have created. I'm, you know, it's like God was sorry for making man, but he was going to spare Noah and his family. He said, Noah found favor in his sight. So in the, in the sixth season, God reacts against ungodliness. Now this is what it means, that because God, God began the creation of flesh on the fifth day and perfected the creation of flesh on the sixth day, it means that in the sixth season, the manifestation of flesh reaches a zenith, reaches a climax. Men do wickedness in this season. You see evil rising in this season. And because evil is rising, that is where it now makes sense that God says, let those who bear my image rise and subdue and rule and have dominion so that we bring things to the way it ought to be. So God decided that he was going to destroy humanity in the sixth chapter of Genesis. We see the same thing again in the sixth book of the Bible. God authorized the children of Israel to destroy, utterly destroy the Amorites because in Genesis chapter 15, God said to Abraham, I'm going to give you their land, but I will not do it now because the cup of, their cup of iniquity is not yet filled. So in the sixth book of the Bible, that cup of iniquity you know, God feared, and now God mandated Israel to go and destroy the Canaanites and possess their land because the sixth season is a season of reaction against evil and against wickedness. In, in Judges chapter 6, God raised Gideon to go to war against the Midianites who oppressed the children of Israel. And in Revelation chapter 6, you see Jesus, the Lord Jesus, began to open the judgmental scroll, you know, to break the seals of the judgmental scroll to release judgments into the earth. So it's a time to pray against the rise of wickedness. We come into a sixth season, or you're entering into a sixth week, or you're entering into a sixth year, or a six, seven years, or six, forty-nine years, or a sixth century. You're praying and asking the Lord that wickedness must not multiply. We possess the gate. I said, no, this gate of time is not for wickedness, and we're not going to allow wickedness. If God says subdue, rule, and have dominion, it means He's giving us the grace to walk in that. He's giving us the grace to walk in that. Now, it's a season for the godly to rise and exercise dominion. You find this in the Bible, in Joshua chapter 6, you know, in the sixth book of the Bible, Israel rose to have dominion over the Canaanite. Seven nations, one nation, Israel, took over their lives. That's dominion through the power of God. In Judges chapter 6, we see the same thing. In 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha rose and exercised dominion over the Syrian troops that came to arrest him. Because the king of uh, Syria said, I don't know who is leaking our secret. And they told him, he said, Elisha, whatever you do in your bedchamber, he sees it. He sent troops, troops to go and arrest him. As they came, Elisha's servant woke up one morning and said, Alas, my master, what are we going to do? The man says, 
don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And he prayed right away. I said, Lord, open the eyes of this young man. And his eyes were open. As his eyes opened, he prayed again and said, Lord, strike this man with blindness. And the people became blind. That's dominion. That's dominion. And then he called him and said, who are you looking for? You know, this is not the way. He led them to Samaria. And when he got there, he prayed and said, oh God, open their eyes again. And their eyes opened and they saw themselves before the king of Israel. That's dominion. That's, that's why this story is recorded in the sixth chapter. You know, to, to, to show the, the thing, to show how these patterns line up. That what God wanted in the book of Genesis chapter, uh, chapter 1, on the sixth day of creation, you see it in the sixth book of the Bible, you see it in the six chapters of the Bible. That's pattern. So you see pattern. In Ephesians, in Daniel chapter 6, Daniel was thrown into a, lion, a lion's den. And he spent the night with lions and they didn't do him anything. That's dominion. He exercised dominion because he is in the image of God and he's wrestling with those who express ungodliness. He exercised dominion. Ephesians chapter 6 says, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God. Take up the whole armor of God. Exercise dominion. So, meaning, don't let these people, I mean, prosper. Don't let them have victory. So that's the will of God, that in every sixth season, God wants us to exercise dominion. Is a season of dominion for those who express godliness. It's a season to arise and say, this is our time to rule. This is our time to have dominion. Now, this is wonderful. So it's a season of inheritance. It's a season of inheritance. Now, before we get into the inheritance, look at what happened in Esther chapter 6. God remembered Mordecai. And as he remembered Mordecai, God, you know, the king remembered Mordecai and promoted him, gave him the highest honor in the land. And Haman, who had been his enemy, who wanted to kill him, was walking on foot and shouting for everyone to hear, look at the man whom the king delights to honor. Mordecai was riding on a horse, wearing the king's robe, you know, putting on the king's ring, you know, at the recommendation, by the recommendation of Haman, because he thought that those things would come to him. And Mordecai had dominion, subdued. That's when Haman began to fall. This is, this is amazing what we have in the Word of God, the patterns in the Word of God, that what you see in creation, you see in the books and chapters of the Bible that correspond to narrative. Hmm. So, is the season of inheritance, you know, a time to demand what belongs to you. The Israel didn't just go to Canaan to take the land. God promised and said, I have given you this land. I have given it to you. On the sixth day of creation, God said to man, See, I have given you vegetation for food. In Joshua chapter 6, God said, See, I have given you Jericho, his king and his mighty men of valor. I have given the, the land to you. In Mark, Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, Pray and said, Give us this day our deliberate. It's our bread. So give it to us. So the sixth season is a time to demand what belongs to you. It's a time to, you know, to, to go for what belongs to you. What you know is yours. What you know is your right. It's a time to go for it. That's what we do in sixth seasons. And the sixth week of the, of the year, of course, you know, falls you know, uh, from February to February 5th to February 11th. That's the sixth week of the year. So it's a time to pray. You know, go for what belongs to you. Go for what is your passion. Go out into warfare to do the will of God. And God will release all that is needed uh, to grant the victory. 
Now, again, it is a season to focus on the kingdom rather than on survival. It's a time to focus on the kingdom instead of survival. In Matthew chapter 6, why would Jesus say, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink? It's because of the anxiety that comes in the sixth season. Take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink? He said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Because the, the goal of God in the sixth season is the establishment of his kingdom. To snatch, to snatch any portion of the kingdom that is in the hold of his enemies or those who do not bear his semblance, those who express ungodliness. The sixth season is a time to take back the part of the world where they, they are and take it from them. You know, wrest it from their hands. Is it is a time to exercise kingdom dominion? Is it time to exercise kingdom dominion? So is it time to focus on the kingdom rather than on survival? So Jesus said, Don't bother about what to eat in this season. Don't give, don't worry about that. Just pursue the kingdom because God knows that you, your father knows that you have need of these things. That's the mistake that Achan made in Joshua chapter 6, that he was fighting a kingdom war, kingdom battle, a holy war, and he was looking for garment, Babylonian garments. What for? It's not a time to look for Babylonian garments. In Acts chapter 6, the apostles said, because of a quarrel that was, you know, the murmuring that was coming over, the distribution of the apostles said, it is not right that we, we give up the preaching of the gospel and begin to serve tables. Appoint men who can take care of this business so we can give ourselves unto prayer and to the ministry of the word. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus fed people, fed multitudes, but after they have listened to the word of God. In, 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 uh, in John chapter 6, Jesus also fed multitudes, but he said to them, do not labor for the meat that perishes, but for the meat that endures unto eternal life. You do not allow survival to, you don't allow survival to take, to rise, the need for survival, to rise above the kingdom, kingdom first focus on the kingdom and all these things will be added to you in second kings chapter six two women who could not endure famine decided they were going to eat their children don't allow survival don't let the kingdom you are pursuit of the kingdom you are standing for the kingdom you know rise or come under survival. Never, never put survival under the kingdom need. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Wow. Now, the sixth season is a time to prosper through instructions. If you, the, the sixth day of creation was the first time God had to communicate with the creature to give instructions. He says, see, I have given you this. I've given you food. I've given you this. So, and the sixth season is a time to prosper through instruction. Every sixth chapter of the Bible, almost every sixth chapter is about instructions. Genesis chapter 6, God gave instructions concerning the construction of the ark. In the sixth book of the Bible, God gave instructions how to cross Jordan, how to conquer Jericho, how to take the land, conquer different nations, how to divide the land and everything. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus gave instructions about fasting, about almsgiving, about prayer, and about anxiety, about the cares of this world. In Acts chapter 6, it was instructions. The apostles gave instructions, please look out from among you, appoint seven men of honest repute. Who would take care of this business? In Judges chapter 6, God gave instructions to Gideon about how to you know, go about delivering Israel from the hand of Midianites. In 1 Samuel chapter 6, you see the same thing. The Philistines received instructions 
how to return the ark to Israel. So the sixth season is a time to open your ear to instruction. It's a time to listen to God. It's a time to receive wisdom from God for the challenges of the season. It's not a time to go by your own strength. The reason God made man in his image is because six season challenges require more than human intelligence. That's why God had to make a creature that has his wisdom, has his righteousness, has his power. Let us make man in our image. God had somehow had to, had to reproduce himself because of the challenges of the season. How do you cross Jordan? How do you, how do you bring down the wall of Jericho? How do you arrest an army that came up against you? How do you complete the wall of Jerusalem in 52 days? The season, the, the, the six season challenges require the wisdom of God. So God had to make man his image. On the sixth day. Wow, this is God's word is sweet. I tell you, the word of God is just amazing. It's so it's so sweet. I can't I can't give it up for anything. The word of God is so 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 amazing. So it's a time to listen to instructions. It's a time to receive instruction from the mouth of God and um, know how to order our lives in the time to prosper through instructions and obedience any battle that joshua lost in the book of uh, the sixth book of the bible like in the battle against ai was because they did not listen to instructions they had broken god's covenant broken the commandment so it's a time to put down your ears and listen to god and um, to be able to know what God would have you to do. And I'm just so excited about, you know, what God's will for the season is, and this is how we are to walk. So I, I, I hope that, you know, when you're coming to the sixth week, like in February 5th to 11th, this is how to pray. Oh Lord, let you shut the door against wickedness. Is a time to have dominion. It's a time to say to the wicked, no, you're not going to prosper in this season. We 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 cleave onto we, we take hold of God's power, God's wisdom to bring down wickedness. Wickedness rises in this season. You know, you know, I, I, I live in Nigeria. I mean I'm a Nigerian. In the sixth year of Nigeria as a nation, there were two bloody coups in 1966. One in January, another one in July, because the wickedness of man rises, reaches a climax. The Second World War was fought within the six, seven years of the 20th century. So this is a time to watch against ungodliness and wickedness. I pray that what we have just shared here will help you uh, to understand God's will for the season and how to uh, redeem the time and also how to pray in this season. God bless you.